Hello. Um, GDP, GNP, gross domestic product, gross national product, these are measurements of the size of an economy. And uh, they're pretty big numbers that we're talking about. So, so uh, today I want, to, I want to compare GNP and GDP, or at least distinguish between the two, um, look at some numbers, and, and then finally show you why we should be careful when we use these numbers, uh, because they can be considered very inaccurate indeed. Um, Anyway, so let's start. GDP, gross domestic product, GNP, gross national product. Well, we usually use GDP figures. Um, GDP is literally the value of everything made in a country. If I'm talking about the UK, it's the value of all output from the UK economy. Now, that might be foreign companies. Nissan have a very large factory in the north of England, producing a lot of output. But that's counted in the UK GDP everything produced within the borders of the UK. GNP, however, is for the UK, everything produced by UK owned businesses and workers, wherever they are in the world. The Nissan factory, which is in the UK, is not owned by Britain, it's, it's a Japanese company, and that is not included in GNP figures. BP, producing all over the world, um, their output, the value of their output, is included in GNP. So GNP is the, is the value of all output made by British firms, wherever they are on Earth. GDP is everything made in Britain. And in the case of the UK, GDP is actually a little smaller than GNP. Nevertheless, we're going to look at GDP figures. Um, and I'm going to give you three countries, three different sized countries here. Greece, which is where I live, um, has a GDP of something like, um, in billions of dollars, something like $250 billion. The UK has roughly a GDP of something like $2,200 billion, or in other words, $2.2 trillion. The USA, I had something approaching $12,000 billion, $12 trillion. And, and, and if you're interested, the entire world has a GDP of something like $37 billion. So the USA is about a third of the world economy. But what do these numbers mean? They're so huge. Uh, why do we calculate them? Uh, and can we trust them? And do they matter? Is it important? Well, we, we calculate them because we want to know, or economists want to know, um, year on year how much the economy is growing. So although such a huge number might mean nothing, by comparing it to the next year's number and the year after that and looking backwards in time and comparing, it allows us to calculate economic growth because truly economic growth is the change in the size of the economy and, and the, the level of output. And, and that we need to calculate GDP figures for that reason. Um, it's also good, a good way of, of, of assessing the quality and effectiveness of government policy. If a government sets out with some policy to try and achieve economic growth, well, only by measuring the economy will we know if those policies were successful or not. So we, we do calculate these, uh, these figures, um, but the question is, are they really accurate? And there are all kinds of problems with, with accuracy. Here are the problems with accuracy, accuracy of GDP figures. Firstly, do we calculate everything? A lot of the, a lot of the output, the work that, gets, that, 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 that occurs in an economy is kind of under the radar, it's in the, it's in the hidden economy. Um, or it's, it's just people you know, doing DIY at home. And if I pay a painter to paint my house and I, and I pay him 3,000 euros and he paints my house and it all goes through the system, it will get counted because it's work done in our economy. But if I do it myself and I save myself 3,000 euros, it never gets reported and yet the same amount of work was done. Um, if I grow vegetables in my garden, uh, um, and instead of buying them from a, from a, from a, a, far, a commercial farmer, it's, again, it's work that's been done, but it wouldn't get calculated. Second problem, how do we calculate the output of certain workers in our economy? How do we calculate the value of a nurse in a hospital? How do we calculate the value of a teacher where there isn't a specific output to be calculated? Very difficult sometimes to calculate the value of workers in the tertiary or service sector, especially in the public sector as well. So this is difficult to be done. In fact, what's done is we calculate the value of a nurse in a hospital um, according to how much uh, she is paid or he is paid. And therefore, the, the, the wage is calculated as the worth of that worker and the worth of the output of the worker, but it's not very, uh, it's not very satisfactory. And this leads to further inaccuracies of, uh, of, of, um, 
of the calculation of the GDP figures. Comparing the figures to previous years, of course, we have to calculate uh, the inflation rate and take that out because uh, these, these figures are calculated by the price of goods being sold. The, the, it's not the price of making the products, the final price. Do we include indirect taxes which bump up prices of goods? Yes, we do in GDP figures. So all of these inaccuracies can make us think, well, is it worth doing it at all? But, but here's something to think about. Whatever the level of inaccuracy, presumably that level of inaccuracy is reasonably similar from one year to the next. If that's the case, then it doesn't matter about the inaccuracy. As long as there's the same amount of inaccuracy, we'll get an equally inaccurate figure from one year to the next. And what we're really looking for, which is the change in economic growth, should presumably be true. In other words, if this is a wildly inaccurate figure for Greece, but we find that next year this has risen to 260, which also be inaccurate, as long as the level of inaccuracy is the same, we can truly believe that the change was 10, which is whatever percentage that is, 10 out of it's about 4%, 4% economic growth, if we, if we see that. Even though we know those figures are inaccurate, because they're inaccurate in the same way, the change, which is what we really want to know, uh, can be considered quite accurate. Um, so that's what GDP is, uh, as opposed to GNP. Um, and now maybe you understand when we hear that China has had economic growth every year for however long, for of, of you know eight, nine, ten, eleven percent, or when uh, here in Europe, uh, the Republic of Ireland during the uh, late 90s and the early 2000s had very rapid growth, six, seven percent every year. Um, you see what this means? It means that literally the volume of output, the value of the output being produced in that economy was growing by those very rapid uh, proportions. Um, and you know, we understand also when, when we hear gloomy predictions of economic growth of 1%, 1.5%, um, what that means. It means that the value and output is barely rising. And in a really deep depression, it can actually fall, and the number will get smaller. Uh, and that will be negative economic growth, of course, economic decline. OK, so I hope that. Uh, I hope that was reasonably interesting and, uh, and I was of some use to you. Okay.